there's been a couple of times when the water didn't work. Right. First room that I had, when you flushed the toilet, it was just leaking through the wall. <laughs> so. Welcome to the Expat Edge with Marcus and Matt, where we answer your questions about becoming an expat to help you thrive abroad. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Expat Edge. Today, we're in KOTOR Montenegro, and we just wanted to share some of our first impressions of Montenegro and KOTOR specifically today. We're also in Budva, and what we think it would be as a potential destination for nomads. I mean, we could go through all the topics, but I think in general, I've been to Serbia, you live in Croatia. I think if you're considering the, you know, the Balkan countries, Montenegro is probably not the best pick. I think the most surprising thing for me was how expensive it is compared to Croatia and yeah. Serbia. Yeah, and I think that may be because we're in the most touristy areas. Sure. And also, it kind of seems to me like it's like more ecotourism where they keep everything undeveloped and right. more natural. So that being said, it's not very easy to get around. Yeah, I mean, we drove here from Croatia. Yeah, 30 kilometers. 30 kilometers took over an hour. And the, I mean, there's basically a one and a half lane road from as mm -hmm. soon as you go over on the ferry, you cross over the border and you're in the city called Novi Herzeg. Mm -hmm. And then you take the ferry and near you know, KOTOR and there's a, a one and a half lane road like everywhere here around the entire bay, which yeah. is touristy area of the entire country. Yep. On one hand, like it's it's really picturesque, like you can see the mountains behind us, it's, it's beautiful. But I think if you really want a nomad lifestyle where you have kind of freedom, I think this place kind of restricts you quite a bit in a way. I mean, people are quite friendly, but I, I don't know, I'm kind of surprised how expensive it is compared to... Yeah, I mean, for a dish like just a simple fish fillet most places around here it's 20 euro and it's not like an upscale restaurant right it's just sitting on a bench right <laughs> i mean beers five five euros mm -hmm. um i mean obviously it sounds cheap if you're from the u.s but five euros in this part of the world is quite a bit i mean in serbia it was 250 two mm -hmm. maybe podgorica would be different but at least on the coast yeah very expensive very expensive yeah. What about, I mean, getting around also. I mean, there's basically no public transportation mm -hmm. around KOTOR. Where's the closest airport? Probably Dubrovnik? No, the closest airport is Tivat. Okay. Which is basically on the other side of this bay where I was considering flying out of instead of Dubrovnik because you don't have to take a ferry. But I don't know. I read the reviews of the airport and they're just horrendous. <laughs> I've actually never seen an airport with reviews like that. Where people just say, you know, it's just total mayhem. And so I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's... There's a lot of natural beauty here. The people are nice. The food is nice, but it's quite expensive, but it's quite rough around the edges, would you say? If you're coming from Dubrovnik or another European country, it's noticeably less developed. Yeah. How, how would you compare it to Serbia? I mean, less, I mean, okay. I'm gonna compare only to Belgrade because that's the only place I've spent time, but it's way less developed than Belgrade. I mean, Belgrade is basically mm -hmm. like Croatia with a little bit of, I mean, it's like Ukraine compared to Russia. I mean in some ways it's more developed but it's still a little little rough around the edges it's not part of the eu so there's not probably the same regulations around roads and whatnot but here the, this one and a half lane road is, is really frustrating i mean just today we went from kator to budva and it was what 16 or 17 kilometers something like that it took yeah. over an hour yeah <laughs> so i mean again there's butts say here but also we're, we're at a nice resort here in kotor but compared to the resort we stayed at in Croatia, I mean, this is... Yeah. There's been a couple of times when the water didn't work. Right. First room that I had, when you flushed the toilet, it was just leaking through the wall. <laughs> so not quite as developed as Croatia or other European countries or even other countries in the Balkans. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, if you're really into, uh, like you said, kind of eco-tourism mm -hmm. and hiking hiking or... off the beaten path kind of destinations although i mean we were in kotor that didn't feel off the beaten path at all no there were lots really. of international tourists there but budva today that was like only eastern european tourists yep i mean i guess if you're someone maybe if you have a sailboat and you like sailing yeah. it could be a good location because there's lots of infrastructure for boats right every couple meter, hundred meters there's another marina but other than that if you rely on a car or a bus in general if you're in a rush yeah 
not yeah. somewhere that I could. I mean, it's it. definitely digital nomad only. I can't imagine it's even possible to find a job as an expat in Montenegro. Mm -hmm. Maybe in Podgorica, so there's some like um, World Bank type job where you're like doing the international development or mm -hmm. something. But I don't think there's any sort of Western salaries. Not even close. Yeah. I mean, what yes, about teaching English? Do you think there would teaching be... English? Actually, that's probably much easier here than it is in Croatia, Croatia or yeah. Serbia. Well, I'd say Croatia or. Belgrade. I haven't been to other places mm -hmm. in Serbia uh, long enough to know. Yeah, actually teaching English might be a, a good way to go because most people like in the shops and stuff don't really speak much English mm -hmm. here. The restaurants, it's kind of like so-so. A number of them have spoken to us in Russian since our my wife and his girlfriend does, you know, speak Russian and Ukrainian. So I think it's probably much easier to find a job teaching English here. But again, I, I think you would want to rely on a digital nomad yeah, type situation definitely. if you were going to be here and uh, Montenegro. So, no, I think from where we've been, I don't think that it's a location I would probably choose to live in. Yeah. But as you said, if you're into eco tourism or nature and hiking, I think it could be a good place. Yeah, I agree. So that's first impressions of Montenegro. We'll try to get some more videos in the future. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video. This was the Expat Edge with Matt and Marcus. We hope you enjoyed the video. Visit theexpatedge.com for even more content that will help you thrive abroad. You can submit your ideas for video topics and sign up for free at theexpatedge.com. See you there.